of course, there's a feeling of entitlement. Oh. And that's what I've realized over the years bilang isang negosyante. Mm-hmm. That entitlement actually prevents you from becoming a good business person or entrepreneur because feeling mo, I deserve this job because I graduated from here. And ginawa akong parang basurero. Mm. And, you know, I, I could see for all the hard work that I produced from the day in life, day in the life of being a basurero, oh. ito lang yung parang kita mo pag oh. ka sa junk shop. Eh. Oh. If you've got a great idea mm-hmm. and you're able to implement it, at pangalawa, if you've got the grit, yung katatagan and resilience mm-hmm. to run it, yan yung importante pagdating sa negosyo. Mm-hmm. Sa pagkakataon na ito, itong yung pabansang wealth ko sa puntong ito, makakasama na po natin ang ating Iponary of the Week, Serial Entrepreneur, Motivational Speaker. Ay, nako, grabe. At uh, ito naman, bata pa ako napapanood ko na. Mm-mm. <laughs> Naka favorite na favorite natin 'yan sa mga commercials ng isang soft drinks, walang iba kundi si RJ Ledesma. So, sige, uh, RJ, growing up, uh, syempre, uh, iba-iba yung ano natin, yung background ng family, no? May mga iba came from a not so privileged background, hmm. may mga iba middle class, may iba may kaya. So, which sphere do you belong to? I think that I would belong into a middle class. Kung nakita ko yung daddy ko nung wala kaya ako, siya po ay isang entrepreneur. Oh. At uh, dumada rin siya sa mga panahon na medyo uh, malakas yung negosyo, hindi kumita yung negosyo. There was a port, sort of like a roller coaster ride in in doing business. So yung talagang napulot ko sa kanya, di ba? If you've got a great idea mm-hmm. and you're able to implement it. At pangalawa, if you've got the grit, yung katatagan and resilience mm-hmm. to run it, yan yung importante pagdating sa negosyo. Mm-hmm. Nung nagkamalay ka, siyempre, iba-ibang stages. Eh. Mm-hmm. Yung buhay nyo ba, medyo may kaya na, nakakaluwag na, o nag-struggle pa? Com- comfortable naman. Comfortable mm-hmm. naman yung buhay namin. But also at the time, na-realize ko that they were also running several businesses to ensure that, of course, na masustain yung aming lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So, nung bata ako, maliban sa kanyang real estate business na ginagawa ng daddy ko, nagpatayo siya ng isang video rental business. Oh, oh, really? Sa mga nakakalala, yung may isang store na Sonics, S-O-N-I-X. Si mami ko naman may, may fashion boutique, fortune boutique. So for me, that was, that was where I really learned, you know, how it's like to live like an entrepreneur. Talagang dapat may hustle, dapat umahanap ka ng mga midiscarte, umahanap ng mga resources para magnegosyo. Nagbantay ka ba ng, ng shop? Oo. Oh, oh, oh. ah? Nung bata ako, tinuro na magbantay ng shop. Ako yung naghahandle ng customers. It, that reminds me, ah, FYI, nung sinasabi niya yung rental shop, FYI lang sa mga nanonood ngayon. Kasi hindi na sila hindi na oh, alam. Hindi na, hindi nila alam eh. Ang oh, alam oh. lang nila ngayon, Netflix eh. Kasi nung unang panahon, wala pang cable, wala pang, TV, uh, wala pang masyadong mga channels. 2, 4, 7, 9, and 13 lang. Lima lang yan. Mm. At kami naman, sa mga nakakaalala, yung nirerenta po namin noon ay Betamax. Oh, Betamax. Betamax. And then VHS. And VHS and then Laserdisc. Di ba kasi ang danger kasi, RJ, pag ikaw ay lumaki sa privilege na pamilya, no, may tendency na mas spoil eh. May te- tendency na magkaroon ng entitlement mentality. Mm-mm, entitlement mentality. Oo. Oh, oh, oh. I think, you know, mm-hmm. to, be, to be brutally honest, of course there's a feeling of entitlement oh. and that's what I've realized over the years bilang isang negosyante. Mm-hmm. That... Entitlement actually prevents you from becoming a good business person or entrepreneur because feeling mo, I deserve this job because I graduated from here. Pag nakikita ko yung mga pinaka-successful na negosyante, yung mga content creator, hindi sila entitled. They have to work hard to for what they do. And that's over time I realized also that's what I have to be able to develop. A skill set na you do things based on merit and you work hard. And if you know people if you are able to use your network to do that even better pero meron bang season nung bata ka medyo feeling spoiled ka at oh, feeling oh, I, th- I think i think we all went through that syempre uh, kasi di rin di ko rin namalayan because syempre yung yung pananaw mo sa buhay ang ay, ay yung kung ano nakikita mo sa mga magulang mo at oh. sa background mo oh. so that's all you get to see but i think i was privileged because sa mga nakakaalala nga ako si Joey sa Royal True Orange commercial so syempre I, I Ilan taong ka nun? I was mga 13. 13 years old oh, ka nun. O sige, oh. kwento mo muna yung journey kung paano ka muna napasok sa commercial. Ah, sige, bago. sige. Oh, tama, oh. tama. So, uh, nung bata pa ako, uh, mami ko kasi, she used to be a former beauty queen. So, may, oh. may talent manager siya, di ba? Oh. So, nung ako yung panganay, di ba? So, she also give, gave me the same uh, yung talent manager. So, sinasabak ako sa lahat mga commercial noon. So, you know, always every year, tinatraining ako. So after that time, um, I got 
I was eventually accepted sa Repertory Philippines sa oh. acting workshop nila. Nakapasok ako sa, sa isang mga regular theater theater plays nila. And from there, I was I was always auditioning for commercials. But one time they asked me to audition for a for a royal commercial, for a royal through orange commercial where they were looking for I guess not just the ability of somebody to, you know, um, to be guapo, diba? But it's really the the did he have some acting skills to do it? So at the time, medyo hype ako sa acting because kakatapos ko lang ng isang theater play. And they made me audition for Royal True Orange. And then I was very lucky. I didn't realize how big pala that commercial was going to be for oh. for 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 Coke at the time. In fact, it was a very crucial commercial para sa mga royal executives nung time na yan. Because yung director ng commercial na yan was the late Lino Broca. Ah, oh, grabe. Lino Broca actually directed the first set of ads of Royal True Orange. And it, lahat po sila, may they rest in peace, lahat po ng mga director ng Royal, but they are a very storied set of directors from 1988 to about 1992 or 93. The directors were Lino Broca for the first set, isa Ismael Bernal, wow. isa si Peke Galiaga, then June Urbano. Ilang commercials ang ginawa mo? We did about 13 to 15 if I'm not mistaken. So in other words, si RJ Ledespa, naging representation siya ng kabataan nung panahon na yun ng mga teenagers. Well, anyway, because of that, syempre naman nakilala ka. Oh. Di ba? Uh, syempre, ngayon, graduate ka and then uh, nagtatrabaho ka na. Mm. I'm sure people remember you during that time. Noong time, naaalala nga ako, I was exposed to so many things outside of my comfort zone of how to... Syempre, noon, yung Tagalog ko, talaga bulogtot, di ba? Mm. It was barely existent. At yung mga na-expose lang ako sa mga tao is not not from different social classes or from different groups. But once I did that, when I realized what privileged meant, what not privileged meant, I also got to realize that people had different perspectives in life. This is how people had to work. And that's where I started be, you know, becoming more and more aware of how, how to handle yourself. You know? I was doing a show also for another station where they asked me to also parang mag-act ka na role, di ba? You have to dress up and you have to act a role, and you have to try to uh, earn an income. Mm. And ginawa akong parang basurero. Mm. And, you know, I, I could see for all the hard work that I produced from the day in life, day in the life of being a basurero, oh. ito lang yung parang kita mo pagpunta oh. ka sa junk shop. Eh. Oh. So for me, but that was, a, I mean, of course, you always expo- may mga social exposure. So nagkaroon ka ng re- revelation nung that, I mean, it just, it, tumatak lang sa akin nung time na yan. It really resonated with me. Eh, that, that, that this is the exposure that not everybody has the opportunity to have what you have. And that kahit sometimes may discarte yung tao, hindi yan ibig sabihin na uh, lalaki yung negosyo nyo or kikita siya na mas malaki. Because lahat naman tayo may discarte, lahat tayo gustong uh, magsumikap, eh, eh, we all want to do well, and we're all trying to find our different ways to 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 improve, mm. to, 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 to earn a living. And that's where you start to see na sometimes it's Working hard is important, but working smart or figuring out how to solve a problem of somebody else is the best way to go. If you, if you think about it, because as hard as you work, you won't really get somewhere far. But if you're able to solve a problem, if you're able to match that product market fit of what you do to what people want, jan sa sabog yung negosyo niyo. What make made you ano parang sinasabi mo? I I think I should already try yung entrepreneurship. Okay. So, nang galing ako sa pamilyang entrepreneur, di ba? So, mm. yung unang negosyo ng daddy ko na talagang tumatak sa akin yung kanyang real estate development business, oh. di ba? And then, but nung time na yan, marami siya iba't ibang mga negosyo rin, di ba? Sabi ko, may video rental nga siya. Mm. Uh, meron pa siyang nag-prone farming pa yung daddy ko. Then, mm. nagbibenta pa ng encyclopedia. So, lahat, mara- 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 marami siyang negosyo ang ginawa. Then, lagi tinutulungan siya ng mami ko. So, sa video rental, si, si, yung, yung mami kong gumawa. Then, may, may travel agency. So, marami siyang negosyo. At uh, iba't iba yung uh, rates of success. May iba successful, mga iba hindi successful. So nasanay, nasanay ako sa isang entrepreneurial lifestyle mm. where you try to get into different businesses to see which one works, di ba? Okay. After college, uh, I was still hosting. I, I actually had talk show in college, Teen Talk. Yeah. Teen Talk kasama ni Bea Lucero. Tama. O, oh, di ba? So katapos yan, I, I went to work for Procter & Gamble for several years and then nag-masters ako. Diba? So I, I left the I left the I, I left corporate work. Then I went to I went into my masters, which is real estate development uh, abroad. And gusto ko sana abroad. But then the thing is, nung nag-graduate ako, 9/11. 
So, noong 9-11, unang-una, bubbly economy sa states, medyo mahirap po humanap trabaho. After 9-11, walang trabaho na para sa mga dayuhan dyan sa states, di ba? All the foreigners. So, I came back home to work with my dad. And the thing is, when I came back to work here for the family business, you know, very, very, it was a, it was a very tough time. It wasn't easy for the family business and it also wasn't easy to get a job again, I guess, no? So from there, I experimented with d- different things. So mm. una-una, gumawa ako ng sarili TV show ko. May TV show ko, yung The Men's Room. Yeah, naalala ko. Sa Studio 23, kasama ni Tim Tayang. No. Then from there, nakita ko ni ibang tao naman, they also liked how I, yung pagsusulat ko, they liked, I was a creative writer eh. So Tama. biglang na, nakakolom ako sa Philippine Star, then naging editor-in-chief pa ako ng Manual, which is parang men's lifestyle magazine. And then, after that one, bumalik sa konting hosting, nag-host ako sa... Kunyari, isa isang wedding wedding ng kaibigan ko. People like my hosting, so they kept on hiring me. Then eventually, nalaman nila may business background pala ako. Why don't you host for these events? So nangyari dyan, isang income stream na. One income stream became before, because um, the family business was you know doing okay but medyo struggling, I was able to find other income streams based on my skill set, which was uh, yung walang, walang kapital, kundi yung kapital ko dyan, laway ko, oh, di ba? Mm. So, bumalik ako sa writing. The writing became lucrative for me. Nakilala ko dyan. Then, hosting. A lot of hosting became very, very lucrative for me as well. Mm. Then, eventually, kagaya nat- natin dalawa, nag-host ako para sa Go Negosyo. Mm. And nung pumasok ko sa Go Negosyo, so, I would host on the stage, so on stage, di ba, kasama ng panelista. But the most more interesting discussions para sa akin ay backstage. Mm. Ha, bago kami umakyat, syempre kasama kayo sa isang lamesa. Natututo ka? Natu- natututo ako. At yung natuto ko sa mga, ayan po, so, kasama ni si, uh, si former Secretary Ramon Lopez over there. No? Mm. What yung natuto ko dyan, Chinky, is that, you know what, if you talk to people na hindi negosyante, then you have a good business idea. Sometimes, isu-shoot down ka, di ba? Parang, Dama. ay, hindi mo kaya yan, hindi mo ano. But pagkasama ko yung mga negosyante, The entrepreneur, they're always asking you, oh, anong negosyo mo ngayon? Anong inisip mo? Anong bagong negosyo mo ngayon? Or kung may problema ka, oh, itong gawin mo, di ba? Itong gawin mo. Lagi may solusyon. So it started helping me become a better way to think about entrepreneurship because I always tell people, pag naging entrepreneur ka, the idea is that your job is to solve other people's problems. Di ba? Kagaya kanina, di ba? You're solving people's problems. You're finding other people's pain points. Kasi kung ako ay na iirita sa isang bagay, ikaw rin na iirita sa isang bagay. If I solve our irritation, dyan ako kikita ng pera. Tama, tama, tama. Diba? So, that's where that mentality started coming. And then from there, dyan ko naisip gumawa ng negosyong Mercato Central. Kanina kinakusap ko ni Rodel, yung tao mo, sabi niya, Sir, paano mo naisip yung Mercato Central mo noon? Hmm. Sinabi ko sa kanya noon, kasi ako, journalist ako, pinapadala ako sa iba't ibang mga bansa. And whenever I'd get sent to another country, yung first place kung saan kami dinadala ng mga tour organizer ay yung mga pagkain. food market, yung mga sa Singapore, sa mga Mm-mm. Thailand. So I said, bakit wala tayong equivalent sa Pilipinas ng mga night food market? Mm-mm. Eh, para tayong mga, you know, mahilig tayong kumain kahit anong oras, di ba? Mm-mm. At yung mga call center, ano oras sila kumakain ng lunchtime? 11 p.m. Wala silang uh, fresh food or, you know, nice home-cooked food. So dyan, uh, dyan yung unang nabuo yung idea ng Mercato Central. Then over time, somebody said, oh, you know, I was exposed to hosting so many shows. I would host mga shows na mga tech startup. I would host shows on business. So that's where my other businesses started coming. Nakita mo yung mga pain points dyan. Hmm. Kunyari isang pain point na unang lumabas dyan is for example, nakita ko dyan yung mga Oh, OFW, gusto magka-franchise sa Pilipinas, pero ah, hindi nila kaya patakbuhin yung negosyo habang nandyan sila. Hmm. So sabi ko, oh, pain point yan. Why don't I establish a business that helps OFWs invest in the Philippines but uh, we can run the business for them? Yan yung negosyo kong easy franchise that I put up, di ba? Isa naman dyan, nakita ko marami mga malalaking mga negosyo from abroad, they want to put up mga contact centers over here, di ba? Many of them go here. But may mga malilit na negosyo, yung mga MSME, micro, small, medium enterprises abroad also na gustong pumunta sa Pilipinas because it's cheaper to put up the business here, yung mga outsourced businesses here. Pero hindi nila kayo mga malalaking firm. Ah, sige. Then ginawa namin yung business na enter PH to help those small businesses come over here. So that's how I think about business. Eh. Eventually, one one business led to another. At dyan, from, from first hosting muna, isang income stream lang, yung hosting lang. And after that one, ah, writing became an income stream. Speaking on entrepreneur. Because all of a sudden, people were saying, can you talk? Like, ikaw, Chinky, di ba? You talk about Iponario. I talk about entrepreneurship. People started paying me to start speak about entrepreneurship. Isa pang income stream yan. 
And then I also get my income stream from working as a consultant for different companies because of my exposure to business. So more or less, grabe ah, guys. I hope, ha- habang nakikinig at nanonood kayo, ano napansin nyo? Number one, in order for you to succeed in life in terms of finances, ah, you need to create multiple income streams. Bakit? Just in case hindi nag-work yung isa, meron kang fallback. Mm-mm. That's number one. Number two, Ito, matindi ito ah. Pumunta ka sa Thailand ba yun? Thailand? Uh, Thailand, Singapore, Oo. Taiwan. Oo. Yung, yung mercato na concept, di ba? Nakita mo. Ba't wala dito sa Pilipinas? Mm-hmm. Kaya nila mo dito yung parang street food style. Mm-hmm. Tama? Guys, I just want to encourage you, whenever you go to a place, do not think like a consumer. Yes, yes. You have to think like a producer. Tama? Yeah. You know, Chinke, I often tell people, ano... Paano ko nakikita yung difference ng isang entrepreneur from a regular person? Is that uh, entrepreneur looks from the lens of opportunity. Kunyari, pupunta kayo sa ibang bansa. Oh, kunyari, oh, kunyari. Oh. So, you go to Thailand or Singapore. Pag uwi dito, yung mga regular persons, they'll go, Oh, ito, ito kiniinan ko. Ito yung mga binisita ko. Pag you talk to entrepreneur, they go, Ito yung negosyo nakita ko dyan. Paano ko dadal dito yung negosyo na yan? Exactly. That's where I see the difference for many entrepreneurs. And then number three, guys. Ito bibigyan kita ng powerful tip. no? Allow me to mm. tell you. Ang pinaka-core niya talaga is communication. Ah, tama. Oo nga. <laughs> Yung pala, chick, tama ka oh, di ba? Oh, tama, tama. Writing, communication. Right. Broadcasting, communi- hosting, communication. Oh, speaking, right. communication. The reason why na, na ma-market mo yung, ano, yung mga business, because you're good at communication. Bago ka mag-umpisa ng negosyo, tanungin mo saan ka magaling. Mm-mm. Ano yung core competence mo? Find your strength. Oo. Yes. Mm-mm. Di ba katulad na sinabi ko kanina, Di ba gusto niyo magnegosyo? Anong mm. alam mo? Sales. O sa sales ka. Kasi pag nandun ka, ay nako, everything follows. That's right, that's right, that's right. So ngayon, malipat na tayo. Grabe, ngayon ha, makikita niyo na talagang itong si RJ ay tinatawag nating seri- serial entrepreneur. Si RJ ba nag iipon Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, itong gusto ma-explain, no? Nung napakasal kami ng asawa ko, we had to go through a parang... Yung Pre-counseling. Pre-counseling. Uh-huh. At sinabi niya sa counseling, especially with the financial counselor, dapat yung mag-iipon ng pera, yung, yung taghawak ng pera, siya yung mas... Magaling. Mas magaling at siya yung mas... At, 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 disciplina. Mas, mas may disiplina. Yan yung asawa ko. Oh, so, yeah, I know. So, how, how we've done... How we, you've, and you've spoken to her. So, that's, I think that's how we've, how we've done it. Because that's... You know, sometimes when you're working, like I say, as an entrepreneur, magaling ako sa big idea, pero hindi ako magaling mag magpatakbo ng araw-araw oh. because that is not my strength. Hmm. Di ba? Hmm. But that is my, that's the exact opposite. That is my wife's, that is my wife's strength. Eh. Hmm. Di ba? Uh, madetalyado siya ako, big picture. So the same way when it comes to finances, I know how to generate income but she knows how to manage and, manage and also invest the money. And I think it's worked out very, very well for all of us. Kasi paminsan-minsan so sabi ko, saan tayo kukuha ng pera para pambayad sa, sa tuition? Saan tayo kukuha ng... Don't worry, I've saved some money. So, oh, you know, so, so that's what I like. And she, you know, she makes, makes sure to choose the investments that she makes and she listens very carefully also to the investments that she has. Kasi for me naman, investing can be like, for example, she's very careful also with me in terms of what are the contracts that you put together. Because sometimes, you know, the difference between me and her is that, syempre, as a host or as a speaker, you always want goodwill. You always want, you always want to give, give, give. But sa kanya naman is, wait, wait, wait. We have to double check. Are you getting the best deal from this tama, one? Tama. Or for example, pag isa-isang negosyo, tinatawag dyan sweat equity, di ba? Kunyari, uh, we want our, we want to invest in RJ's, you know, we want RJ to be our spokesperson. We want him to be our consultant. She has to ask, is it worth your time? Tama. Are they giving you the correct? Are they giving you the correct deal that's perfect for you? Tama. Galing. Because, so, so it's very important, and I'm very thankful to my wife that she's been able to manage the investment portion. Hoy guys, ha, ito pakinggan yun to mabuti yah. Likewise, a successful business, a successful enterprise, a successful marriage is finding the right person who can complement tama, tama. Oh, your, exactly. your weakness. Di ba? Kunyari, sa negosyo ka rin, magaling ka sa sales, pero hindi ka magaling sa operation. And ma- hanap ka ng magagaling na tao to work for you or probably partner with you. Agree? Exactly, exactly. Very much agree. Oo. Oo, so, grabe. Ha? Ano may ipapayo mo naman sa mga tao na mga ipunaryo ngayon na gustong magnegosyo? Pero sa nasabi, Ay, RJ, hindi naman akong mayaman eh. Hindi naman anak mayaman, wala akong pera eh. 
'di ba? Ano may papayo mo? Kagaya ng ito, ito na interview ito ni Chinky sa kanyang show no, yung ating kaibigan si Steve C, 'di ba? Oh. Remember Steve C, Great Deals E-commerce, one of the fastest growing e-commerce companies here in the Philippines. Na bought siya sa utang of about 30 32. million or 32 million pesos, right? But I like how he eventually got out of it. Sabi niya naman hindi mo kailangan lahat ng mga negosyo magsisimula na may pera ka. Hmm. Sometimes, ibang negosyo nagsisimula sa laway lang, di ba? So many people, they started off talaga sa laway lang. You don't always have to have the capital to start the business. But you find other... Kung baga, ito yung goal mo, there are many ways to achieve that goal. And sometimes, to get there, you have to be able to use kung anong, anong nasa sa'yo. So kunyari, nagbenta siya ng insurance because you don't need to have capital over exactly. there. Pwede ka maging content creator exactly. if you want to start off. And many people successful nowadays, content creation, dyan sila nagsimula. Kunyari, <laughs> di ba, tayo nagsimula sa content creation. Or yung mga, mga nandiyan ngayon, yung mga gumagawa ng siling makeup, beauty products, sina kagaya ni na Rosmar, kagaya ni na uh, Glenda, kagaya ni na Jonalyn uh, Ramos, they all created their own products after being exposed online, di ba? Tama. Diba? After being exposed, they know how, how it works. Eventually, they were saying, why do I promote other people? When I, uh, well, at first, they're promoting other people's products, reviewing other people's products. Nakikita yung feedback online. Umikot lang dyan, may diskarte. Kumuha ng tall manufacturer para gumawa ng produkto nila. Then they go back again and market their own product. So, you see, you don't have to necessarily have the money at the start. But you have to have the discarte, the drive, and the resilience na kahit... Times are good, times are bad, and dito ka. That's why I'm impressed with Chinky Tan, di ba? Every day is out here marketing, di ba? It's hustle, di ba? That's what you need to do to make sure that business is out there. Yeah, galing, galing, galing. Pero alam mo, I just want to encourage you, no? Uh, more than anything else, kasi yun nga, meron ng kasing ano eh, exposure si mm. RJ nung bata pa. Meron ng ano eh, parang concept. Mm-hmm. Kasi because you were raised in an entrepreneurial family, mm-hmm. unfortunately, karamihan ng tao, hindi ganun ang exposure. Kaya kailangan, mga ka-friendship, lalo na kung ikaw, nagtatanong ka, empleyado ka, wala namang negosyante sa pamilya mo, pag-aralan mo. Oo. Diba? Or get good mentors who are exactly. entrepreneurs. Basta sa akin, although my dad was an entrepreneur, I had to be exposed to different types of entrepreneurs mm. to understand to appreciate that. Kasi iba, nakita ko talaga iba yung pananaw at lifestyle ng entrepreneur when you put us together in one room with people na career people or negosyante. Nat- natatakot sila. And I, and I understand fully. So I often tell people, kung balak mo maging isang entrepreneur, maybe the best way to start is mag-side hustle ka lang. Tama. Just to test, di ba? Then eventually, if your side hustle becomes close, the income in your side hustle is close to or almost equivalent to the money that you make from your salary, Time to leave your job. Time to leave your day job, di ba? Tama, tama, tama. Alam mo, grabe, no? Probably, please share kung ano yung mga social media that you want yes, to promote. Yes, please. Uh, kung maaari sana, give me a few seconds lang po, no? You can please follow me again, RJ Ledesma sa Instagram. Uh, nasa Facebook rin po ako. Nasa TikTok rin po ako. And I also have a podcast, the RJ Ledesma Podcast. In that podcast, I interview a successful business personality like Chinky Tan, may interview ako kay Chinky Tan dyan, pati kay Francis Kong, kay Steve C. And then, we learn about their success secrets para natin kayang gayahin yung kanilang success secrets. And they also share with us their opportunities for new businesses, di ba? So, please follow RJ Ledesma Podcast and Changemaker or Businessmaker RJ Ledesma on YouTube. Yan, maraming maraming salamat. <laughs> 